When last we left our hero, we created our approximation of Avatar Aang in the previous video, and today we're going to give this a run in honor mode following our four rules for the playthrough. Number one, we have to play as a Way of the Four Elements monk. Number two, we have to make roleplay choices that fit with Aang's good aligned philosophy, which plays into number three, we can't kill anyone, undeads and constructs don't count. And number four, Aang is a vegetarian, so we only consume camp supplies without meat. So with this challenge, we're going to jump right into the game and we wake up after being infected by a Mind Flayer tadpole. We look around and go loot this Mind Flayer corpse. Dead. Good. Uh, and okay, well, what do we think actually? Uh, let me know in the comments if Mind Flayers are people too, or if we can make an exception for them for our rule number three. Uh, I hear they don't have a soul in the traditional sense once they're transformed. Still, I feel like that's probably a no even for them. Spoilers? We'll actually meet some individuals later in the game who might make us see their potential humanity, and so I think that would be good enough for Aang to feel conflicted about killing them. However, in this case, good, it's dead, in so much as we don't have to make that choice right now. Anyway, also, something funky going on with the graphics on the milk outfit, so we'll eventually figure that out to just change the camp supplies to use the visual toggle there to solve the problem, so I, yeah, so, something's funny. There. Even this weird brain thing we find as we make our way is a living creature, and so, of course, we spare it and don't try to harm the thing, and so it even joins us, like a friendly talking pet with sharp murder claws. We meet our first companion, and I suppose it's unavoidable, but Lazel isn't exactly a fit for Team Avatar, but we'll make do for now. Also made sure to toggle on non-lethal attacks, which means if you're using a melee weapon, you can knock your opponent out rather than killing them when you would otherwise reduce them to zero hit points. So that is how we will be tackling our third rule of no killing. This applies to all of our party when we toggle it, so even if we wanted to just roleplay this as our main character Aang's choice, at least for all of the characters doing melee attacks, they'll be following this method too. However, it seems pet companions don't exactly have the same restraint, and our little brain friend's claws indeed do a murder, even with the toggle turned on and it being a melee attack, so good to know. Unfortunately, we can't do anything to help these zonked out cultists, but we are able to free another companion to help us through this opening act, or scene, or ship. Shadowheart isn't exactly Katara, but she does have healing spells, so she'll do for now. I can help! <laughs> And my first big regret on this run, I decided to pull off the command spell to drop weapon on Commander Jalkir. And I don't even really know why, I didn't have a plan for this flame sword thematically. I just hadn't tried this cheesy strat before and I wanted to sort of see if I could nab that sword. But when I failed and ran out of spell slots, I had the brilliant idea to use the Nautiloid Refresh mid-battle to get all of Shadowheart's spell slots back. Ah, brilliant cheesy strategy of... Oh. So, apparently, if you go back past the boss room, the whole ship just explodes early and you game over. And since this is honor mode, well, it's time to start this over. I lost it all. I want it back. But it's fine, we're learning. Our brain friend already killed someone, so had we already lost anyway? Who's to say? We'll try this again. Good news, we know how to build our Aang and can even update a few things for this time around. Hmm, what was that? And so we'll make our way back, making the same choices along the way, but this time, we figure out how not to kill anyone while doing it, if we're careful or lucky at least. And we're back to the boss. Now, did I learn my lesson? Kind of. This time I cast Bane, which gives a minus 1d4 to saving throws, so when I tried Command this time, he failed his save and actually dropped it. I got the stupid sword. Was it worth it? Not really, but I felt vindicated at least a little bit. After getting yeeted out of the ship, we airband to survive the fall. Later, we wake up on this beach and find Shadowheart again. Sokka? Katara? 
Where are my friends? Shadowheart and Ang go looking around and find some hostile brainy boys. And since this is honor mode, all the enemies fight at the tactician level, and some are even slightly buff. All while this is the only save file, so there's no going back if we screw this up. And oof. We tried to get the drop on them, but fighting up close and melee as a monk can sometimes be challenging, and we end up going down and just barely surviving this fight thanks to some lucky rolls. Ang survives the fight by making three successful death saves to live, and Shadowheart is luckily kept up at one hit point and some lucky missed attacks on her. Eventually, Shadowheart's crossbow bolt kills the final intellect devourer, intellect devourer, that's hard to say. But since Aang was unconscious, uh, we just won't tell him about that part. We continue on and recruit Astarion to our party. He's not exactly Sokka, but he'll do for now. We find a dying mind flare and pull a classic hero's morality of, oh, I won't kill you, but I don't have to save you either and leave it to die. We pull a wizard out of a portal and he joins us. Not sure if there's an avatar comparison for Gale, but we're headed to go find Withers and try to solve that issue. So we head to the back entrance and defeat these undead skeletons before entering the fancy hidden crypt and recruiting Withers to our camp, which means if we now go to camp, we should be able to talk to him and recruit hirelings to help us complete our team avatar a little bit better thematically. I've honestly never done hirelings yet, but uh, oh, Withers doesn't have the option for some reason. Okay, so it would appear that you must be at least level 3 before the option for hirelings is available, and we're only level 2 at the moment. But look, the wiki also says you have all these options to choose from. They're locked options, so... Um, well, I think top would make a good half-orc noble. That's actually perfect, <laughs> I think, for reflavor. Who are you? <laughs> My name's Toph, because it sounds like Toph. I wouldn't have cast it any other way. Oh no, though, you can't change their names, and so... Uh, I mean, no, no, this just won't do. I got all the way here thinking Hirelings was the solution, but to get the ultimate Team Avatar party assembled properly, I will think I'll have to use an old trick. By closing Steam and launching the game in four separate instances, I would join a local multiplayer session and play all four characters, each with a custom race, class, background, and name. I already knew how to build out Aang, but next I had to create Katara, so... Let's see, I think she should probably be a cleric for the healing, or maybe a sorcerer's got some good water spell option flavor, or multi-class them both, and it, uh, oh, the crash. I guess I'll have to think ahead and try to be fast, which means next time we'll be crafting our full custom party for Team Avatar before we start fresh with everything we've learned so far. But this time we'll have the whole gang back together. I'm excited and I hope you will stay subscribed or subscribe for more. Thanks for liking, watching. See you next time in the next video. Click the thing or something. Thanks. Bye.